Okay, so it seems like this episode of Quarantine Abroad is going to be very political heavy. Um, it wasn't my plan to have a political episode, but I thought I would respond um, to some posts that I've seen on social media. Uh, I don't know if these posts originated from actual people or just kind of propaganda, but people that I know have shared them uh, and I have seen comments from other people that I know on similar posts uh, supporting them. Uh, the first post, um, this is Boris. I never voted for him. In fact, I actively hated him and thought he was a total pleb. What I've seen over the last past four days or so is a man who's clearly working exceptionally long hard hours, a man who's facing something that no nation's leader has had to deal with in living memory, apart from obviously all of the other nations. Um, a man who's had to roll out, who's found out this job is far more than waving a plastic flag and hiding in a fridge. The babbling buffoon act has been dropped for something far more serious. Sometimes I think he may have worked in the motor trade, however he's doing well. In fact, I think he's doing a pretty awesome job if I'm honest. So that was one post um, from someone on social media that was shared. Uh, and another post that I saw, people may knock this man, but my God, he's keeping our nation together. Not only did he have to deal with a mess of Brexit, but he has had to deal with pandemic. I'm proud to call him our prime minister. Let's give him the credit he deserves. Thank God Corbyn isn't the man in charge through this crisis. Now I'm intrigued actually as to the differences that would have taken place had Corbyn been in charge. Um, I think someone actually said, oh, thank God Theresa May isn't in charge as well. Um, and I really don't know what the, the difference would have been, if any. Um, but it seems, from my point of view, having kind of watched the briefings and, and read articles um, from reputable sources, uh, that the handling of this has been slightly manic and, and potentially deadly for a number of people. Um, if we look at this article from the Times that came out on Sunday, uh, we hear from the, uh, this was written by uh, Tim Shipman and Caroline Wheeler. Um, we heard from uh, sources regarding Dominic Cummings, who is the government's senior aide, the Prime Minister's senior aide. Uh, we obviously see him through the Brexit negotiations. Um, Dominic Cummings, the Prime Minister's senior aide, became convinced that Britain will be better able to resist a lethal second wave of the disease next winter. If Whitty's prediction that 60 to 80% of the population became infected was right, and the UK developed herd immunity. At a private engagement at the end of February, Cummings outlined the government's strategy. Those presidents, presidents say it was herd immunity, protect the economy, and if that means some pensioners die, too bad. And if that means some pensioners die, too bad. They were the words that came out um, basically from a briefing from the Prime Minister's senior aide on the government's strategy to deal with the coronavirus. And once again, we're hearing them words herd immunity, uh, which the government have said is was never their strategy, uh, but it seems very much that it was their strategy. In fact, a uh, quote from the uh, chief scientific officer um, from the government uh, literally said that because the vast majority of people get a mild illness to build up some kind of herd immunity so more people are immune to this disease and we reduce the transmission. To try and reduce the peak, broaden the peak, not to suppress it completely. Also, because most people, the vast majority of people get a mild illness to build up some degree of herd immunity as well so that more people are immune to this disease and we reduce the transmission at the same time we protect those who are most vulnerable from it. Those are the key things we need to do. I also think with the closure of pubs and bars that was that was handled very, very badly. Um, that obviously happened this week, but it's something that he was warning against for days and days. He said, don't go to the pub, don't go to the cinema, don't go out unless you need to. I'm not going to ban them, but also don't go to them. If something is bad enough that you think people shouldn't go to these places and you have it within your power to stop people going to these places, why would you not implement that sooner? I also feel like the British government has come to a point where you've got half the population panic buying and thinking this is the most serious thing ever, and half the population are continuing to go out, continuing to sit in parks, continuing to go to beaches. So I don't understand how his messaging could be very clear that this is so serious, and at the same time, don't panic buy, yet people are doing both. And you can say, well, people are stupid, we, we can't do anything about that. Other people that aren't stupid are the ones that may end up suffering and may end up dying. I think I want my Prime Minister to be able to, you know, take action and actually stop these people doing that if it's within his power. 
So overall, I think he's done a pretty terrible, terrible job. And I'm concerned for people in the UK because of the terrible job that has been done so far. I have to say at this point that I really want Boris Johnson to do a good job. And I have to want Boris Johnson to do a good job. I've got no choice at this time, but to want Boris Johnson to do a good job. And hopefully we're seeing that. Uh, hopefully the one thing that's missing from the econo economical point of view um, is uh, self-employed people. Um, Self-employed people are, from my understanding, now going to live on, what, 92, 93, 94 pounds. Um, they, they can claim on, on uh, universal credit. Um, so they need some sort of financial support for the work that they had or were planning to have over the next few months. I don't think that's something that's been addressed by this government either. Um, they have done some good things. I don't want this all to be a negative on the government. They have finally taken action in terms of closing down locations. Uh, they have sort of taken action in terms of workplaces. And we are seeing, I guess, more and more tests being done. But if you look at things like pictures of tube trains being packed, if you look at the curve that we currently have, in fact, I think yesterday, uh, the number of deaths in the UK rose to 424, which was uh, an increase of 89, the biggest daily spike in deaths from the coronavirus in the UK so far. Um, and I think that's probably uh, a mix of, well, obviously we were going to see this rise in deaths, but at the same time, the government wasn't taking enough powerful action, uh, which they should have done. Um, I think that's pretty much a wrap to this episode. I think tomorrow I'll probably be a bit more bright and bushy-tailed. If you don't like political stuff, then you don't have to listen to this episode. I probably should have said that at the start, but here we are. Um, and I'll be back with a, a piece of nonsense tomorrow. I'm John Lane.